Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, to show you a very simple receiver circuit that you can build yourself without, almost, without hardly having even to try, as long as you can get a hold of the parts. Uh, it, unfortunately, Radio Shack part numbers will probably be changing if the company survives at all, but even if they don't, you'll still be able to get parts from other sources. Uh, Mauser, Jane Co., and a wide variety of others uh, in order to build a circuit like this. But the gist of the functionality of an antenna of a receiver like this is that you connect an antenna, just say a long, a long wire shortwave antenna, to a weak signal radio frequency amplifier. Uh, then you mix that frequency, that radio frequency uh, that comes from the antenna, say anywhere on the ham bands in the high frequencies from 3.5 to 29.7 megahertz, you mix that with the output of a tunable local oscillator. Now it's very important that that oscillator's signal not get back through the mixer and out to the antenna, but it's not going to go back uh, backwards through these circuits uh, and be radiated. A regenerative receiver is an entirely different situation, but this is called a direct conversion receiver. If this tunable oscillator is tuned to, say, 7.030 megahertz, then a signal that comes in at exactly 7.030 megahertz will mix with that and produce a zero beat, and you won't hear anything. But if you tune that oscillator one kilohertz above or below to 7.031 or 7.029 megahertz, you will hear the mixer uh, output as an audio signal at one kilohertz. So you will hear, in particular, this kind of a circuit is good for single sideband and also for CW and various digital modes such as phase shift keying, radio teletype, and others. Uh, it's not so great for regular amplitude modulation, but ham radio operators hardly use that at all anymore. The problem with a circuit like this is that you get what's called a double signal. That is to say, if you are tuned to 7.030 megahertz, then a signal that comes in at 7.031 will mix with that and produce a 1 kilohertz tone, but a signal that comes in at 7.029 will also mix with that uh, tunable oscillator output and produce a one kilohertz tone. So the two signals will interfere with each other. They'll sound like they're zero beat with each other, even though they're two kilohertz apart. That's called double signal reception, and it is the chief limitation and disadvantage of direct conversion receivers. As for the selectivity limiting the bandwidth of reception, you can use audio filters to do that, but you're still going to have that double signal problem. In order to overcome that, you need to use uh, a, uh, a super heterodyne receiver with a filter in the RF section that gets rid of one of the side bands from the result of mixing the incoming signal with that of the tunable oscillator. But the main advantage of a receiver like this is it's very, very easy indeed to build. Uh, and uh, just about anybody can do it. Just about any shortwave radio enthusiast or ham radio operator can do that. And along with a very simple oscillator and amplifier transmitter, have a little station. Uh, this audio amplifier is only sufficient to power a headset. If you wanted to, to have speakers, you'd need another audio amplifier stage to boost that audio even more. But that is the gist of this whole business, and you'll find it 
among other things, in my book, located in the giant gaseous cavity within star-forming region NGC 3324. Just kidding. The book itself, Ham and Shortwave Radio, for the electronics hobbyist. You'll find a little bit of a discussion about that and many other types of receivers and subjects about ham radio in this book. And you'll also provide, or you'll also be provided with, a link to this Amazon page to buy the book in the description of this video. Meanwhile, far, far away and long, long in the future, there was will be well time is irrelevant on the grand macro scale of the cosmos didn't you know that this giant gaseous cavity reigns supreme in an unknown galaxy in an unknown cluster of galaxies in an unknown universe in an unknown set of universes in an unknown thought kingdom with one exception ham radio is a major part of that empire. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations. Signing off for now. 73 and so long.